Hey everybody, Sean from Vest to Live. Uh, dropping episode 27 of our sneak peek for the week. Uh, and this is, this is a pretty big one, I think. Um, we've got coming up for this week, CPI reporting as usual, uh, which is a consumer price index. We've got big bank earnings on the schedule. And I also want to touch on the jobs report again. Uh, just something really quick that I think is probably really important to share. So I'm going to jump in. I'm doing something a little bit different this time. Uh, I created a couple of slides. I'm not a huge slide guy, but I thought it might be interesting or something worthwhile to see here. So let me see here. Um, I'm going to share my screen and kind of hit this as usual. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So let me open these up. So as I said, we're getting a little, little more creative here. Uh, I, I know some engagement was up when I'm doing the live ones, but I tend to notice that I don't get a lot of follow through on them. So I thought that maybe it was making it difficult to watch them or harder to see them in real time. So I thought this might help with that. So again, we're talking our 27th episode of sneak peek for the week and let's jump on in. So CPI data or consumer price index is really um, how we look at inflation across a number of myriad items, services, goods that we deal with as regular consumers. This is particularly a big deal because it helps us to understand how expensive things are getting across a lot of different areas. We can sort of tease different areas out, see where it's getting worse or better, et cetera. Uh, I typically think CPI is really telling of how inflation is going long-term. <clears throat> the, the month to month type of stuff is not important to me, um, but, but I do think it's a really good indicator near term. And frankly, the way the markets have been lately, I feel like every week it's just an ocean wave. It hits, it crashes or pulls back out. It hits, it crashes, it pulls back out. And uh, as, as a pretty serious investor and trader, I, I am growing concerned with, with the direction of what I'm seeing every week. I'm finding it harder and harder to feel good about where things are going, even when there's good news hitting. Uh, I had a report out earlier this week that Palantir had taken down a humongous contract and then the price went down literally the next day. Um, again, I think it's a long-term play there. That's not advice for anyone, just my own opinion on how I'm looking at it. But, you know, just something to really be aware of that, like, there's sort of a loss of, of clarity around why things are happening within the market, even for those who are very, very much tied to what should be happening, what the expectations are. So let's just jump into a few quick details on CPI. So for those who are curious, I want to keep an eye on it. The, the CPI data will be out on Wednesday. Um, typically, Bloomberg, CNBC, live feeds will be reporting this in real time, but definitely good to learn how to look this stuff up and understand how the impact could be on your own portfolio. Um, one thing I'm going to call out is the expectation is that we're going to be generally about the same as the previous month on month and annual increases. And this is to say we are still expecting inflation to rise. Uh, so it's going to rise about the same as it has been rising is what this means. So I went and did some research to see what the current economic uh, consensus was from a group of economists. And what we're looking at is about a 0.3% increase month over month. And we're sitting around 5.3% over the prior year. Um, and, and again, what's really tough here and something that's worth noting is last year, again, was still 2020, a pandemic year. Things were shut down. So it's hard to get a true and, and deep grasp around what this ultimately is going to mean, how it's affecting things, because that was such an anomaly of a year, the data is kind of skewed still. Um, but important to note, it is still going up, it is still rising <laughs> um, month over month and year over year. So an, an important note for anybody to pay attention to. Um, I was gonna give you a real example here too, but I'll, I'll speak to this next point. Uh, we do also think from an economics perspective that energy prices are going to be a big impact on these numbers. Um, I, I had to fill my tank today and I think I paid just over $3 and 30 cents per gallon. And uh, I ended up having to take a ride after filling the tank actually, which is why I filled it. And I ended up about 30 or 45 minutes away from my house. And there was a gas station there that was priced out at about two ninety seven. So, you know, that's, that's a significant like 10% plus difference in price. So just seeing that kind of a difference from about a half hour drive. Uh, I'd be curious what other people are seeing for gas prices where you are. So if you are watching this and you've looked at gas prices recently in the, in the past day or two, I'd love to hear where you are and what you're seeing for pricing. Um, and, I, and I do think that as we're talking about supply issues with now energy, now uh, the chips, um, and this is going to sort of be a ripple effect through different consumer goods items, especially cars, things of that nature. Um, it's getting very hard to predict where these numbers are going to go. So that's why I want to include this in here because these are market movers. These are portfolio movers. These can have huge impacts on the positive or the negative. So as usual, find out what happened after the last one. What was the CPI data telling us after the last release? What can we expect from this release? 
So let's keep on moving. The other big thing coming this week is bank earnings. And this is, this is very important. This is gonna be very directive of <laughs> what we're seeing coming out of the financial sector. Um, hopefully we can get a lot of information around mortgage rates, uh, savings rates, what we're seeing for uh, rates across the business, interbank sharing, uh, assets in our management, et cetera. I think there's a lot of really interesting things coming here. Um, but I wanna call this out. I'm specifically talking about bank earnings, but in a more general earnings perspective, especially as it applies to things like I said on the previous slide around supply chain, this means you know, the Nikes, the FedExes, the UPSs, et cetera. Everything is part of an ecosystem, right? No matter what sector you're in, it's part of a larger ecosystem, right? Just because you're in banking doesn't mean that a slowdown somewhere else doesn't affect you. Of course it does, that's obvious. So I think what we're expecting across the board, both in talking to a lot of folks I know, as well as the broader spectrum of sentiment within the marketplace, uh, a lot of investors out there are really preparing for what is expected to be a possible or potential slowdown in the overall corporate profit growth. Um, coming after what was a really great second quarter. I called it out here. What we're expecting to see for Q3 is about a 27.6%, this is aggregated, um, expecting number for S&P earnings. Now, the key here is that 27.6% is certainly a pretty good number, but keep in mind in Q2, that number was 90%, and this is according to FactSet. A few of the major bank earnings that I'm gonna be keeping an eye on uh, are, are really essentially four of them here. I'm looking at JP Morgan, which is going to be coming out Wednesday pre-market, Bank of America, which will be Thursday pre-market, Goldman Sachs, which is Friday pre-market, and then Morgan Stanley as well, Thursday pre-market. I think this is a good, a good spectrum and slice of a couple of really, really big banks that focus both on the retail sector, the investment sector, investment banking, a general institutional. So this is a good way for me to get a feel for what's going to happen. And then I try to look for trickle-down opportunities into smaller banks, more regional focus, or super regional focus banks to see if I want to take positions, how I want to take them, if it's an opportunity to go long or short, et cetera. And I think that's one of the big benefits of some of these really big, notable, you know, global banks reporting is it can help to give me sort of a taste for, you know, what's coming, what, what can I expect? Um, is there opportunity to play in the small realm as well? Uh, and the last thing I want to talk about is just, unfortunately, really disappointing news. Um, we had a major disappointment in the jobs report. Um, watching most of the major news channels report on this was frankly kind of stunning. Uh, they, they, were, they were clearly on air live blown away by the reports. Um, I won't name who it was. It was all the majors were pretty much saying it. But I think the key is we're still just not hitting expectations for growth. And this affects everything. And I know that oftentimes when we think about investing or trading or how we look at our portfolios, et cetera, anecdotal data is not necessarily the way we want to go. But this is a situation where frankly, Anecdotal data um, is becoming less and less anecdotal and more and more widespread. So like just a couple of things I called out here that I'm really focusing on myself personally is we know that jobs report was extremely low compared to what we thought, right? That's a key, that's a key thing is, is based on consensus. Um, and there's, there's generally, in my opinion, uh, not really a clear answer or certainly an un certainly an obvious reason why. I think there's lots of different diatribes as far as why one side thinks this, another side thinks that. But here's, here's the reality. Whether it's COVID or the Delta variant or government benefits or people just don't want to work or pay is not high enough or whatever, the bottom line is people aren't working. And everywhere I go, whether it's in my neck of the woods, two, three, four hours away, talking to friends who live on the other side of the U.S., Everywhere you go, this help wanted signs everywhere. When I get a coffee in the morning uh, at a Dunkin' Donuts, they're, they're starting their entry level pay at $14.25. That's way up from where it's been in the past. I'm seeing this more and more. We're actually running into a bit of a situation uh, up where I am where a lot of like 24 hour places are no longer operating 24 hours. A lot of restaurants are having to close early. They have no staff and no help. And we're seeing extended delays in auto repair, extended delays and a lot of things um, of that nature. We're also seeing from the, the, the trucking industry as well, there's, a, there's been a pretty big slowdown in getting people to come out and drive trucks as well. And I just want to call this out. You know, we're not, we're not talking about just entry-level jobs that are having trouble filling roles. Look, I get it. If there's government uh, money that's paying out for not working and it's more than you're going to make, of course, there's going to be an equilibrium issue no matter what. Um, say what you will, say what you won't, but that's sort of a reality. When we're talking about you know, learning to drive a truck and making 80, 90, $100,000 a year, and we can't fill those roles, 
that's getting to be sort of a, an eye-opening thing right now within our country in the U.S. here. Um, and, and, and I'm not pointing fingers or even speculating on what's causing it. It's more just a general sense of like, I wonder how many folks are looking for jobs that are six figures based on Instagram realities of, you know, <laughs> private jets and vacations in the Maldives. And I just fear a little bit here as I'm looking out at the markets, like, you know, we do need people to do a lot of these jobs. I think a lot of them are going to end up turning to automation. And this is sort of one of those interesting times in history where when we see automation take hold, whether it was the industrial revolution or now today's really technological revolution, I think what we're seeing is the rise of AI at scale. Um, and this is why I talk a lot about AI and machine learning in general, but I think that a lot of jobs are going to hit a point or a lot of companies are going to hit a point where they're like, you know what, we're just, we're going to stop hiring for those roles and they're going to put an automatic checkout machine or a pay kiosk or an ordering, you know, tablet on your table or whatever the case might be. And I do wonder what the long-term effect of that will be. I can absolutely without a doubt be assured that both sides of that conversation are going to be very passionate about how they feel on that front. Um, whether it's taking away jobs or not paying enough, or this is the right direction to go in, whatever the case is, oftentimes innovation follows need. And I think that we're coming up on need here for a lot of really interesting things, right? There's a general lack of affordable housing. There's an abundance of jobs, but maybe don't pay enough. There's a, a growing unskilled blue collar workforce that is causing <coughs> increasing rates in the blue collar world. I mean, there's just a, a, a big variance of things that are happening that sort of, for me, taking all this information in, and I'm, I, I love data, I study data literally every single day, this is what I do. I love to look out and see what, what's out there. And these are becoming moments of fear for me when I say, you know, we have earnings coming, we have no one taking the jobs, we have places closing earlier, and maybe it's just indicative of we don't need a 24 hour life anymore. Uh, maybe it's indicative of the fact that people are just simply not going to work when they don't want to anymore. I don't know what the answer is, but I know that I'm trying to track these trends and understand what direction they're going in. So as I continue to do that and start to get a feel for that, I'll continue to share it here. So with that, um, I'm gonna call it, call it a night. Uh, as usual, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate the time. I hope you get something out of this. And again, if you're looking at gas prices in your area, I would love to understand what you're paying, what those rates are, are you seeing them change? And uh, any other comments you think would be great, I really appreciate it. So as usual, as usual, 